What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG. And as always, it's my continuing mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Would you like to know more? If those words remind you of Starship Troopers, then that probably means you're a fan of the EDF games, or at the very least, you know what they are. A series of titles created within the same game world by developers Sandlot, Think Arts, Vicious Cycles, and Ukes, who's handling the current game EDF Iron Rain. And these developers' main jobs have been to send enough bugs, robots, and giant slathering carapace thingies at you that the game might as well have just shipped with a pic of Casper Van Deen paste onto the front. For EDF, it stands for Earth Defense Force. These guys do a pretty damned horrible job of it, though, with each title in the series miring our heroes more and more in the dirt of a nitty-gritty battle with alien menaces from the sky. Aliens that apparently had TVs and watched Arachnophobia one too many times, because that's pretty much all this is. One part Earth alien invasion movie, one part Starship Troopers, and a whole lot of therapy later, you get EDF Iron Rain, a slightly more westernized title that introduces a change up to the overall feel of the game while still trying to solidly steer down the road that caused most of its fans a serious case of the heebie-jeebies since day one. So let's see if Ukes can pull off the subtle switch to a westernized B-movie action game, or if it's just another bargain bin title relegated to the, hey, you've actually played that kind of status. Earth Defense Force Iron Rain is out April 11th for PS4 for $59.99 for the standard edition. Let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe or like it or share it. So here's my review for Earth Defense Force Iron Rain. Q-level voice acting, Scorpion Cowboys, and when one rocket launcher isn't enough, how about two? graphics are up first. So one thing that I've found instantly noticeable is that the game has really gone for an almost more subtle and realistic look for its graphics. And while that's not to say that the entire cities or villages or towns you're in aren't constructed of buildings with all the structural stability of a Venezuela hill during flood season, just separating into their own individual parts with frightening ease, it does mean the game looks a bit better while it's doing all that. In fact, it's always been a strength of these games. Inhabited graham cracker homes crumbling and crackling and shattering around you with weapon strikes, enemies body slamming into them, and more. It does offer a nice kinetic feeling to the battles, knowing that at any one time you could possibly bring down the entire neighborhood. And it is certainly noticed here, especially with that improved lighting that helps a little to modernize the appearance with softer lighting effects and tonal changes throughout the game, and it offers a more generational appropriate look to EDF that the prior games have not had. From the outfits your soldiers wear to the robotic exosuits, each with their own abilities, they're a death metal onomatopoeia exuding almost Gears of War stylings when choosing the heavier ones, for example, or letting you death blossom entire colonies of aliens with double rocket launchers with others, down to the more slick and almost Doc Ock looking suits later on. For reasons best left unexplained, they allow for you to also summon your own giant bug, but we'll get to that in a second. It is still a somewhat clunky affair, though. EDF will never win a beauty pageant, even if all the judges couldn't hear or see or smell. Somehow they'd still end up giving every contestant third place and a pat on the back and just send them on their way. From the suits to the characters, from the textures to the faces, EDF has always had a rougher look, and despite the improvements here, those are not missing. It's still got a bit of that appearance throughout. From flattened, ironed-out, detailed face textures to wooden animations when the characters spin around the battlefield, there's no chance you're going to look at this and have a friend come in and say, hey, man, this is the new Battlefront game. However, the game does one thing right, and that is it simply understands the sense of scale. The first time you go skating into an enemy's death park and giant robots are thrashing around firing huge chest beams at you or just trying to stomp on you with legs bigger than Mack trucks, it all has this impressive sense of grandeur. Huge ants creep and leap from building to building, and the first time you see a spider the size of a 747 leap into the air and then baby shoot off of its back, I'll just say this, bug haters probably shouldn't apply. All the bugs and the enemies have their own attack patterns and types and graphically inform the gamer overall of what's probably needed to defeat them. For example, don't walk into a scorpion's grasp or not let the man-sized spider that's chasing you leap into your face and pop off a load of spider juice into your eyes. Because trust me, some of these enemies will beat the living crap out of you in seconds. Also, seriously, make sure that the tank-like ants don't get too close to you because while they don't take a lot of hits, their dead bodies block bullets. And the first time you see another ant's head cresting over the body of a dead brethren, like some massive bug-headed sunrise trumpeting the beginning of a game over screen, you're going to realize your mistake pretty quickly. When it comes to weapons, explosions, particles, and so forth, I would say EDF is and continues to be a bit hit and miss. The good elements are like missiles wicking across the land in corkscrew patterns when launched off six at a time, and there's a, dare I say, satisfying explosion for most of them. But a lot of the gun impacts all have a strange feeling to them. The minigun, the sniper rifle, and normal rifles themselves, they never really hit with any 
impact, even on the smaller creatures or the human rebellion you end up fighting against. Lighten an enemy on fire with a flamethrower or putting 1.21 gigawatt lasers into the fire cockroach's face is fun, but it isn't always that great to look at. Lastly, the locations themselves. Sadly, the game takes a good while to really open up its levels, and this feels a little different than the prior titles, and many times you're going to end up para-dropping into a spot and realize that you're fighting in a zone about the size of a couple city blocks, which results in a lot of smallish battles and skirmishes. Now, that starts to spread out as you continue on in the game, but I would have loved to have seen that open up even quicker. And this is also mimicked in the game's PvP multiplayer, where the size of the locations are actually a bit too small for what's going on. Luckily, some of the suits you can buy fly or can swing up to buildings or gain some other kind of much needed verticality, but they come with their own weaknesses. When it comes to the textures and overall art design of the game, it's about where you would expect it for EDF, despite those changes I talked about in style, which means a little bit more budget, but certainly not big budget. Now, when it comes to performance, since this is PS4 only, I spent my time, well, with the PS4 and PS4 Pro. I was sad to see no 4K mode on the PS4 Pro. That being said, it was running at 60 FPS, and aside from some drops during the cutscenes and a couple times during battle, even in solo or co-op, that 60 FPS frame rate actually held up pretty well during some of the larger battles. One caveat of this is that you do see the frame rate sparing technique of having enemies move at half frame rate when they're far away at times, giving them a almost stop motion look. Big budget or small budget games, many titles have been doing this. With EDF, it's just a bit more noticeable because of the size of those creatures. If you played the prior games, you're going to get about the same performance unless you're on the Pro where you get 60 FPS. That is very nice, and while the change in the color use and overall presentation might remove a bit of the B-movie feel, it does elevate its appearance, and I, for one, actually do relish that a bit. And of course, that brings us to sound, music, and voice. Examine the unique PA gear that controlled the giant creatures in the Rebellion's underground facilities. We reverse engineered the technology and successfully implemented it into our own gear. However, controlling giant creatures requires a lot of power. And uh, let's do music first. You ever had one of those band practices where everyone's learning a new song, but the rebel in the back with a bad attitude and the goth shirt starts wailing away on a guitar because he's bored? That's pretty much every song in Iron Rain. All the EDF titles have always hinged on their almost arcadey, battle-drawn music, where everyone seems really scared that even a moment of silence might crop into the title, which means a mixture of patriotic and theatrical moments interspersed with orchestral elements played out by a lead guitar wailing over the top. You might as well just go buy a bald eagle, put an American flag on it, and then have it play Dragon Force. Nothing is actually wrong with that. It's just not everyone's cup of tea, and sometimes it feels really busy for whatever you're doing. Some would call it chaotic, certainly over the top, but it is unabashed in its desire to harken back to the more arcade action-style games and tracks we're accustomed to. I think for me, I would say it's okay, but not great. And that brings us to voice. And this is actually not very good at all. And this is coming from somebody who's played the ADF games. It's pretty bad. EDF games have never tried too hard in these circumstances. And I guess I sort of have to applaud them that for somehow they've decided to find the middle ground between suck and success and then ride it out like they'd rather die on that spot rather than give it up. From the goofy over the top chats of EDF to the pretty terrible leads and the side characters, to some truly horrific moments where scientists are trying to explain to you how they came upon some discovery, and the only thing you can think of is, is this has got to be a damned April Fool's joke somewhere. As a big fan of B-movies and as a big fan of B-movie games and these kind of things, I can get behind it, but it feels like it misses a couple beats here and doesn't really meld with the rest of the title overall. Not something to stop you from getting it at all, but you may end up noticing. And of course, that brings us to sound. You know, this has always been an issue in the EDF games, and I just wish they'd fix it. Guns in particular have a very artificial sound, almost like a mix of a laser beam and a rifle, while missiles do shoot out of their tubes with satisfying sliding sounds and a whistle as they go and hit the enemy. Explosions and overall sounds around you are pretty nice, 
but the game doesn't really do it justice. Overall, it feels like this is the least improved element of Iron Rain. It's not bad when compared to the other EDF titles, but it's certainly not above them. And most weapons have very little sonic impact, which is strange since the entire game is about taking the largest caliber bullet you have and seeing how many bodies you can push it through like an extraterrestrial bullet gel test. So I'd say overall, not very good. And of course, that brings us to gameplay and a bit about the story. And when I say a bit, that is really what I mean here. Aliens have attacked the Earth and the humans have been beat back time and time again until at this point, the Earth Defense Force is more like the Harrison and Fifth Defense Force flying around the world protecting very small pockets of humanity that have been kept alive all the while doing whatever they can to turn the rest of the world into a massive crumble down shitberg as they possibly can. Surprisingly enough, another human force also peeks up its head in the story here, but overall it didn't do much with it. Ever since its inception in 2003, when the game was just called Monster Attack, not much of the overall design has changed, with each EDF sending us a larger and larger care package of destruction our way, like the world's most unwanted Christmas presents, and each gamer opened them like YouTube unboxing videos, and you never really knew what would spring out. Giant spiders, check. Huge ants, check. Robots that have looked like they were from the 1940s, check. And of course, heavy ordnance, check. If a gun is good in one game, two guns is better in EDF. One missile in another game, two missile launchers here. How about six? Shit, how about eight? That's what EDF offers. Over the top alien invasion actions with you shooting, burning, bashing, blasting, bombing, and churning the alien horde into you can't believe it's not butter paste before leaping into your giant plane to go and do it again somewhere else. When the game opens up, you can choose to play a tutorial, which is a small mission getting you acclimatized to the game systems, which means two weapons, a primary and secondary, how to use the side items like healing and grenades and so forth. And then you sort of jump into the game proper. Now, EDF Heavy Rain has many modes. First, it has a nice long campaign that can be played alone or in split screen, as well as online. It also has an online PvP, as well as a mercenary mode, which is eight players, four by four, in a high stakes gamble to shoot the aliens and collect their hardened innards like insectoid pinatas. Now, once you decide what you want to play, you customize your character. I was a bit surprised here. This is actually a little bit more customization than I expected. Of course, it's not going to hold a candle to some RPGs, but you get to go in there, choose your clothing, your helmets, peripherals, and body armors. In fact, at times, especially in these screens, the game gives off a very big XCOM feel to it, and it works well to buy in a bit more to the fiction than I actually expected. Then you choose a class, which is basically the mechanized suit you want to utilize, each having a special power, like the ability to speed up reload and firing to other more unique perks. The suits range from dual wielding walking tanks, gliding death from above wing gliders, the poorly named trooper who happens to actually be incredibly useful as well as the prowl, which is a suitable mixture of both heavy gunner as well as science and magic, which allows you to summon in various bugs to ride around and cause carnage in. Now, each suit has a specific amount of items it can hold in weight, which has you jumping into the item section to buy items that you've unlocked via finding them on the field or technology unlocks like grenades that heal people because as we all know standing on an explosive is the easiest way to stitch up that cut to dummies that draw on enemies to turrets that can hold off enemies while you run away these are surprising when it comes to their total amount of number and unlocks and there's a lot here to sort of adjust your strategies and then you dive in now no one is going to say that EDF Iron Rain strays too far from the previous game's mission structure. You basically pop into a location and are given one or two and sometimes three jobs to do. Save some people, defend a location, or just outright send the aliens back to whatever hellhole they came from. And that's the magic of the titles, and it always really has been. There are a few things more fun than spider man it onto the top of a building than raining down heavy ordnance on the heads of a bunch of bugs like a futuristic Orkin man or rolling into the enemy, erecting a laser shield and dual firing guns point blank range into a robot's dome. And you're consistently moving and scooting and shooting around the battlefield because if EDF is anything, it is punishing to players who decide to stand in one place. You simply can't go toe to toe for very long with a lot of these dudes. I mean, if you think about it, a Greyhound bus sized ant head butting you is gonna kill you even in this game. So you have to keep on your toes using each class's unique abilities and overdrive specials and special items to keep you alive. One thing I do have to say, and I said it before, is that the mission structure is a bit off at first, with a lot of very short missions up front as the game extends out, and then suddenly, boom, you're in a 35-minute slog with four base stations launching down a bunch of robots and ants all around you. It can get intense incredibly fast, but it's got a bit of a bump there. 
I did like the fact that it allowed me to identify different strategies that I thought would or wouldn't work. But in those couple first missions, it was difficult to even identify a strategy and then play it out before the mission was over. If you're in co-op and you die, you have a number of shared respawns and you can also buy items that can be used on yourself or partners that brings them back alive again without using that respawn. Now, when it comes to control, I will say this. It's fine. It is finicky here and there. If the frame rate in particular drops, and even though it does so far less than the other EDF games, it certainly does happen here, each class feels pretty robust. It also has a quick get out of jail free card kind of special move as well. Like I said, the dodge, a zip move, a nice shield or otherwise. One of the things EDF games have always had in spades is replayability as well. And while not as vast as EDF 5, there's a great deal here that you can return to if replayability is your thing. You can jump in with the different classes, the different item choices, resulting in some differences when it comes to your strategies between you clearing an enemy nest quickly or a juke fest of you going in and out of enemy range to smash a shit out of them. At the end of each mission, you are raided, and whatever gear you found or unlocked is also indicated. Once you found it and purchased it, it's actually unlocked for everybody, which is really nice. And you purchase items with either money or the special crystals that come from different creatures drop when you kill them. There's also a small amount of RBG style moments in the game. For instance, you can buy level ups for your hit points, which can be especially useful if you're going it alone and finding yourself on the wrong end of the death screen one too many times. Also, since these games have always been grindy, it embraces that. And at the end of each level, once you beat it, you have about 30 seconds to run around and grab all the trinkets that have been dropped by the enemies. But it still does have some holdover issues, like not being able to run at an angle if you're sprinting and little bits that can make the game feel older than it actually is. However, Iron Rain tries a couple new things, and most important of which is that some weapons have an active reload system. And while tough at times to keep track of that when a glow-in-the-dark scorpion's hell-bent on seeing how many extra holes it can put in your body before your soul pours out of them, it's still enjoyable, and it adds a bit of depth to the gameplay. Despite me liking a lot of elements of this, I do have to say Iron Rain does have one of its eight feet firmly planted in the past, and that includes in its animation, as well as the cut in frames per second of far off creatures. However, I really continue to like the way they dole out weapons in this game. There's a lot of different weapons, there's a lot of different upgrades and variants, and there's a cool scientific feeling when you have a shotgun and then you have the shotgun version too, and the descriptions that they give, many of them quite detailed, on what you get if you switch, and there's a tit for tat for almost all of them. Iron Rain is also at its strongest, just as the prior titles, when it's doing its best to make you feel like you're writing a B-movie, with enemies pouring out of buildings, houses crumbling around you, and then suddenly, just when everything is quiet, for a second, spiders begin leaping into the battle from out of nowhere. It's just hard not to enjoy it when you're neck deep in mystery meat, dealing projectile-based pesticides while backed up by a bevy of questionably schooled protagonists at your side, consistently milling around like extras at a porn shoot, not exactly sure what they should do with their hands the entire time when the camera's not focused on them. Because I'm going to tell you one thing, the AI has not been improved from the prior game, so don't expect them to save your ass very often. But how do all those things affect the fun factor? And that's the section we'll talk about now. I would say I didn't like it as much as past EDF games. Graphically, I really did like the step forward, but then you start to actually instantly notice that there are other things that haven't been stepped forward. One of those, as I mentioned a second ago, is the AI on your team, who very often do absolutely nothing or are stuck inside of a wall or are just bouncing off of each other or many times strafing right in front of you. And that can be highly frustrating, especially as the game is really difficult. Also, Iron Rain feels a little bit lean compared to the older titles. Now, this doesn't mean that you're not going to be grinding away to get some of those Platinums because they've explained that that is still going to have a lot of longevity to it. I just mean for me, actual solid content. Also, as I said, I wasn't a big fan of the multiplayer stuff due to the level sizes. Even in the single player elements, there were a lot of moments where it felt like the size of the level itself was actually truncated more than I would have liked. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating system. I would say with the issues and some of the things holding this down, this is probably a wait for sale unless you're a diehard EDF fan. And there's a lot of us out there. Few game series really have cultivated such a growing list of have plays and want to play another games that Earth Defense Force has. And sure, by now, Earth should have just been a glowing mass of molten plasma surrounded by the wreckage of more than five massive alien attacks. But somehow... In Iron Rain, you're still there and there's still something to save. And it's still pretty fun to do so, 
even if it misses a step or two. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Reddit, Twitter, or Facebook. And as always, you can become a patron on the Patreon website, which absolutely helps me give you guys reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsor bullcrap. And remember, I buy a code for every single game I review, even if the developer gives me a copy. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.